Marvel should have recasted T'Challa. And I'm probably gonna get a lot of backlash and how could you even say that type comments, but I don't care. Now you see, back in the hated year of 2020, Chadwick Boseman posted one of the last videos he'd ever make to social media. And he discussed like, various social issues and things regarding stuff like COVID, uh, supporting black businesses, building wealth, systemic racism, etc. But in the video, people noticed that he looked a lot skinnier than usual. Like, he lost a serious amount of weight, right? Now, being that he was an actor, I was one of those people who had assumed that he lost all that weight intentionally for a role. Because, you know, it's no secret that there are method actors like Christian Bale, and at, even at one point Robert De Niro, and even 50 Cent in that one movie that never got an Oscar, who will put their bodies and their physical health on the line in order to fully commit to a role. You know, Christian Bale played a role where he lost a shit ton of weight to look anorexic. He played a role where he made himself look like a drug addict. De Niro got his teeth made crooked on purpose. Like 50 Cent lost all of his muscle mass to look like he had AIDS and shit. But all of this was because they wanted to make the role come off as authentic and as believable as possible. Now, with that being said, a lot of people thought Chadwick, you know, he, they thought his weight loss was in preparation for a movie role. Not to mention, people were talking about the movie The Five Bloods, where he plays a, a Vietnam veteran. Pretty damn good movie, by the way. You should go check it out. But anyway, thinking all of this made people feel like the coast was clear. Like, like it was okay to, you know, it was basically okay to joke about it because it wasn't something serious going on. You know, like, they basically thought oh, they were just watching a professional commit to his craft. But then, after some point in time, the comments under Chadwick's video got turned off. Then sometime later, it was revealed that the weight loss wasn't actually for a movie role. It was actually because Chadwick had colon cancer and he's been dealing with it ever since Black Panther made his first appearance in Captain America Civil War. And at that point, a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, instantly became regretful. Oh, they became regretful of all the memes and all the jokes that they made about him. I mean, like, th th there's, a, there's a plethora of callous assholes on the internet who just don't care about nothing. But there's also people who aren't out to hurt feelings because they've got nothing better to look forward to in their lives and shit. I'm seeing all up and down my newsfeed people apologizing, saying, damn, bro, like, I, I really didn't know he was sick. Like, I mean, I, like, I, I ain't mean anything by it. I, I was just talking shit. I apologize for my comments and I hope he makes a full recovery. All kinds of stuff, right? But then one day, the unfortunate news hit and everybody found out that Chadwick Boseman had passed away. You know, everybody from fans to friends and family and other celebrities were mentioning how much they were going to miss him and they wish he could have gotten better. Others were talking about how amazing it was to work with him and they wish they could have continued to work with him on other projects in the future. It was honestly a very tragic occurrence. You know, somebody who is definitely going to be recognized as one of the greatest actors of this generation was gone too soon. But see, the fact of the matter is, Many people can't shake the feeling that Marvel has been using this man's passing as a marketing strategy, which, yes, it's as fucked up as it sounds. Now, I'm not saying that they are doing it. I'm just saying that people have their reasons for thinking so. Now, when it was announced that T'Challa would not be recasted during the MCU Phase 4 lineup, there were those who felt like that was the best move to make. But there were also others who felt like that's some old bullshit. This some more bullshit. Now, it's no question that Chadwick played the hell out of his role as Black Panther, from Captain America's Civil War all the way up to Avengers Endgame. And I was one of the people who knew about Black Panther like way before he came to the MCU. Like, not even trying to sound like on no gatekeeper type shit, but, you know, I mean, I, I read comic books, so, you know. When it was actually confirmed that that was actually him in the Civil War movie trailer, I was hype as hell because I've been waiting like a motherfucker to see T'Challa in live action. So when I saw how dope he was in Civil War, I was already hyped for his solo movie. Now the movie wasn't the bestest thing ever in the world like how a lot of people, you know, overhype it up to be, but it wasn't a terrible movie, it was actually pretty damn good. I appreciated how like various African cultures and different folklores and things like that was being used in a more fantastical way, which there definitely needs to be more stories of within various mediums. Like I'll take those kinds of stories over reskins of non-black characters any day of the week. But when they said they weren't going to recast T'Challa, all I could think of were the various reasons for why that's stupid. Comic book characters, along with various popular characters throughout the decades, have been recast since live action comic book movies became a thing. Think about all the time Superman, Batman, Sherlock Holmes, Spider-Man, James Bond, and every other popular action hero type character who's had a live action movie got recast. And it was either because the original actor didn't care to reprise the role or maybe they just aged out of the role and just couldn't, you know, realistically 
or believably continue to roll, my generation's James Bond was Pierce Brosnan. And yeah, I wish dude made at least a few more James Bond movies before he stopped, but that's just not how things work. People eventually grew to like Daniel Craig over time as the next James Bond. My generation's Spider-Man was Tobey Maguire, but then Andrew Garfield came along and we grew to like him. Then Tom Holland came along and we grew to like him as well. Now there's the argument that when an actor plays a character, they end up playing them so well that they become the character. Like for example, you know, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. Christopher Reeve is Superman. Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. Wesley Snipes is Blade. Chadwick Boseman is Black Panther and so on and so forth. Now, while I agree that there are certain characters that all the actors will most likely never be able to run with, you know, the same way that another actor did. But see, that's the purpose of different actors not trying to fill the shoes of another actor, but to put their own spin on that character. Like, I can't really picture any other actress playing Miranda Priestly besides Meryl Streep. But that doesn't mean that a different actress can't bring their own style to the role. Side note, don't remake that movie because not everything needs a damn remake, all right? Which is most good movies. Now, comic book characters have been and always will be recast for brand new iterations of the character, whether we like it or not. Like, look at the Joker. Jack Nicholson's version ain't gonna be the same thing as Heath Ledger's version. His version ain't gonna be like Jared Leto's version. And his version ain't gonna be like Joaquin Phoenix's version. Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man can't be redone by Andrew Garfield. They can only bring their version of Spider-Man to the table. Now, you can have your favorite iteration, but that doesn't mean that nobody else should ever get to play the character just because you have a favorite and don't want to see anybody else do it. Like, if you, you can like Michael Keaton's Batman, you can like Ben Affleck's or even Christian Bale's Batman. That's cool. But in another 5 to 10 to 15 years, a brand new actor is going to don the cape and cow. Let's say, for example, <clears throat> the MCU gets rebooted in like a decade or two from now. Like, you really gonna have some motherfuckers that's gonna be mad that they didn't bring back an 80-year-old Robert Downey Jr., a 60-year-old Chris Evans, and a 60-year-old Chris Hemsworth to play Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor instead of just, you know, recasting them with younger actors that'll actually be able to play the character for about a solid 10 to 15 years. I don't like that they didn't get Eggs Benedict Cucumber Sandwich to play Doctor Strange. Nigga, he's 80. Give it a rest, bro. Then you have the argument of they could just like use CGI to like de-age them or something. And to that I answer, dude, you really think that's how that's gonna work? The thing a lot of people seem to forget is that it really doesn't matter how much you use CGI to make someone look younger. It doesn't actually make someone younger because <laughs> I mean, just look up that sloppy ass fight scene from The Irishman or the scene with Nick Fury running in Captain Marvel. The reason why they don't move like they're the age of 40 that they were made to appear as is because these actors are actually in their 70s in real life. So they can only move like how their actual bodies would move at that age. For some dumbass reason, I know there's gonna be at least one person who's gonna be like, well, I, I bet they'd never try to replace or recast Stan Lee though. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Of course they can't replace him because he's an actual person. Like those cameos were just Stan Lee making cameos in Marvel movies. You literally can't replace him. Even if you got somebody who looks and sounds just like him, it's not the same person. You really think motherfuckers want to see Flex go on stage and perform Michael Jackson shows? Hell no! The truth of the matter is this, right? As much as you may have liked Chadwick Boseman in the role of Black Panther, and believe me, I wish he could have made a full recovery and continued this shit and did a whole plethora of other roles for decades to come. And if I would've had kids, I would've been like, yeah, this dude is like a next generation Denzel Washington. That would've been dope as hell, but you know, real life don't work like that. A lot of times, shit sucks. Hate to say it, but it, you know, it is what it is though. The thing is, it like, it gets to a point where it starts to feel like a lot of people are really like milking the shit out of it. Like this whole situation, you know, it's like, like you're not, <laughs> truth of the matter is, you're not taking back, you're not taking Bozeman's passing harder than the people who were much closer to him than any of us ever were. You know, like I'm talking about his friends, his family, people who work with him, people who have a much deeper and personal connection with him than any of us will ever have. But it's like, yo, Chadwick's closest relatives are even saying that he would have wanted somebody else to pick up where he left off if he wasn't able to continue the role. Yet you still got people on the internet, grown ass adults acting childish like, no, you better not recast him or we're gonna riot and throw a fit or some shit. All goofy shit aside, Chadwick Boseman is not T'Challa. 
Like he is, Chadwick Boseman is an actual human being who played the role of T'Challa. T'Challa is a Marvel superhero from a comic book. Just because the first actor to ever portray him on screen is unfortunately no longer with us, that doesn't mean that the character has to for some reason mysteriously die off as well. Motherfuckers really be acting like shit Black Panther get recasted that the world is gonna magically forget that Chadwick along with his portrayal of Black Panther ever existed in the first place. And it's like, no, that's not how things work. Sure, there's people that would be mad or be bitter that there's a new actor taking on the role, but the thing is, they're gonna get over it eventually. It's like, I mean, what the fuck y'all gonna do? Like, so you just gonna stay mad forever, boycott movie theaters, and never watch a Marvel property again? <laughs> this please. She. You even got cats talking about how, you know, Black Panther was a phenomenal thing. It was a monumentous moment in cinematic history. It was amazing that black kids, specifically black boys, who can have a genuine hero to look up to and all that. But then some of them same people are opposed to a recast. And I'm like, bro, wouldn't you want to continue that energy of inspiring black kids and having heroes that look like them and all that? And if so, then why not recast T'Challa with an actor who can actually bring that same energy so that the character can continue to do just that alongside the other superheroes it's not chadwick being replaced it's a character chadwick played being recast by an actor who will hopefully do an amazing job picking up where he left off but since he won't be in recast and t'challa is dead for some stupid ass reason there's certain storylines that a lot of people may, may have been looking forward to that now cannot take place within the mcu like if, if you're one of those people who was excited to see t'challa marry storm whenever the hell they decide to introduce the X-Men, that's not gonna happen, bro. If you wanted to see T'Challa become, you know, the king of the dead, that's not gonna happen either. Now, I get that some people just wanted to see Shuri become the new Black Panther, which it does take place in the comics, but at the same time, T'Challa wasn't just randomly killed off in order to make that happen. What happened was, Black Panther was battling Dr. Doom, who wanted Wakanda's vibranium, right? Black Panther made the decision to render all the vibranium everywhere in the world as inert and useless. Wakanda had a whole monopoly on vibranium because they had like, had like a whole mountain of the shit, literally. But because it was now made useless, T'Challa had basically killed their wealth generator. So the people of Wakanda got pissed off and they was like, hey yo, you gotta step down bro, you fucked up the bag. So then Shuri becomes the new ruler of Wakanda for a time. T'Challa goes on to become king of the dead. He still has his powers, he still has his Black Panther suit, he's still the Black Panther, he still has all the tech and all that shit, but he's playing a different role at this point. It's really not difficult to have T'Challa and Shuri on screen with the suit and playing different roles from each other, but modern day Hollywood likes to act like you can't have a prominent female character and a prominent male character on screen at the same time. It's like, nah, 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 what you gotta do is demote or shit on the male character to uplift the female character or just flat out have a female character replace the male character entirely as a much better more superior version of such and such but i ain't about to get into all that in this video and i'm not about to say that that's what they're trying to do in this movie now don't get my words confused for a second this is not a video to try to tell people don't go see black panther 2 to boycott the movie and all that nah if you want to see it knock yourself out pre-order your tickets take your ass to the movies enjoy it take pictures make reviews all that shit your money, your choice. All I'm saying is this, there is no logical reason to not allow T'Challa to continue his on-screen presence in the MCU. If countless superheroes and other popular characters can be recasted over and over and over to continue the legacy of a character throughout various generations, then why shouldn't Black Panther get that exact same respect? That's just my two cents. Now let me know your thoughts and we can chop it up in the comment section. Peace.